In search for the smallest building blocks of matter, science has gone far beyond the limits of the visible by using mathematical models. At the University of Groningen, string theorist and cosmologist Diederik Roest works on perfecting his mathematical models in an attempt to answer what is probably the first scientific question ever asked. How did it all get started? The question is what lies at the core of all matter? What do you find after zooming in on, on structure, past protons, past electrons, past quarks? In physics, you have two fundamental theories. First of all, there's Einstein's theory of general relativity, which explains gravity as curvature of space-time in the bigger picture of our universe. And then there's quantum theory, which explains the funny quantum behavior of the tiniest particles. Both theories are widely accepted in physics, but they're very hard to bring into agreement with one another. We've been using math to design models such that both of these theories can coexist. And surprisingly, these models predict not a particle at the end of the zoom, but a tiny string, a string that can vibrate. And it's exactly the vibration of that string that determines the appearance of a particle that you're looking at. This is called string theory. In science, we use experiments to verify whether a theory is correct or not. For string theory, this is very, very difficult. Even the high energy collisions in CERN cannot provide conclusive evidence for string theory. The strings are simply out of experimental reach. They're too small to see. So instead of looking at these tiny details, we zoom out and we look at the bigger picture. We look at the universe. Within cosmology, we use the entire universe as a single experiment. The Big Bang theory lies at the heart of modern cosmology. Um, and the most accepted model for what happened immediately after this big explosion is called inflation theory. And wind inflation predicts that the expansion of the universe went even faster than we first suspected. And this results in an almost perfectly smooth baby universe. Almost perfect. Because if it were entirely perfect, then structures like the Milky Way would never have emerged. And we suspect that tiny, tiny quantum fluctuations during inflation have provided the seeds out of which all structure in the entire universe have eventually grown. Our models also predict that the universe was not transparent for the first 300,000 years. It was simply too hot, so protons and electrons couldn't combine into neutral atoms, and for that reason, light could not travel freely through the universe. Only after 300,000 years did it become possible for light to travel freely through the universe. And amazingly, we can still detect these oldest light particles at present. And these particles have not interacted with anything since that moment 300,000 years after the Big Bang. That's exactly what happened in 2013. The Planck satellite has caught these oldest light particles and measured their properties in great detail. And the properties are exactly in agreement with what was predicted by the theory. So this gives a very, very strong evidence for this idea of inflation immediately following the Big Bang. For some physicists, the light particles detected by the Planck satellite still do not prove inflation conclusively. So what we're looking for now are quantum gravitational waves. Um, these were also generated during inflation and give rise to tiny polarization of the light. And once we see these, I think we've conclusively proven that inflation has, uh, has, uh, has taken place. This proves where all the structure in the universe comes from. And finally, it also gives a window on testing the properties of these tiny strings at the core of all matter. Okay.